As for me, I trust in the Lord. Let me be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have seen my affliction. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered for Reverend Thomas W. Buckley. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who renew the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design and not be deprived of your help in this present age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. Things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there shall always be rejoicing and happiness in what I create. For I create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exalt in my people. No longer shall the sound of weeping be heard there, or the sound of crying. No longer shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not round out his full lifetime. He dies a mere youth who reaches but a hundred years. He who fails of a hundred shall be thought accursed. They shall live in the house they build and eat the fruit of the vineyards they plant. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear. Did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you, his faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name. 
For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. Who changed my mourning into dancing, O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. Since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem, at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. Then he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Now there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked them when he began to recover. They told him the fever left him yesterday about one in the afternoon. The father realized that just at that time, Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he and his whole household 
came to believe. Now, this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we hear the story of the man whose son was healed and how he came to believe. And he and his whole household believed. It's interesting to think about because back at that time, all members of the household had that same fate, including babies. So why is that important? It means that for us, we baptize babies, correct? And the babies do not decide on their own to have faith. The mom and dad make that decision on behalf of their child. And we see that happening in the gospel today as well. So let's think about that. Really, what that means is that faith is not based on my own actions. Faith is a gift. And just like language, everyone here speaks English, right? <clears throat> And was that your decision? No, that was a gift that was given to you from your parents. You were born and you couldn't speak initially, but you learned to speak English slowly by listening to your parents speak English. And it's the same thing with your historical perspective as well. That's not your decision. You didn't decide to be born here in this time and place in history. And it is also the same with your nationality. You didn't decide to be born as an American. You were born here and <clears throat> that was not your choice. There are many things, many important things that make us who we are that are not our decision that are gifts freely given. And it is the same way with our faith. Faith is a gift. And for all people who are raised in the faith, who have that faith from their community, it's the same way with people in different religions as well. It's a gift. A gift is not something that's stolen, but it's something that's freely given. You can't steal freedom. <laughs> Dear better clarification. A gift gives freedom. A gift does not steal freedom. So, for example, for someone who grows up with English as their language. That is a gift that is cherished and you can become a skilled speaker of English. And you become free to learn other languages later on in life because you have that foundation. If you grew up without language, you would have cognitive problems. You would be 
in a bad position, you'd be, you would not be free. And it's the same way with religion. Without growing up with the foundation of religion, you wouldn't have that ability to grow and to learn and to build, regardless of the religious background. And so, most things in life are God's gift, they're not our decision. And they don't limit us, but really the gifts that God gives free us. Let us pray. For the Pope's monthly intention, for the new martyrs, we pray that those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. We pray to the Lord. For Bishop Sean, that he leads the Archdiocese to fruitful evangelization. We pray to the Lord. For our political leaders, that they heed the calling of God to build a culture of life, beginning with natural conception to natural death. Pray to the Lord. For our united efforts to support the Catholic appeal, so our parish programs and ministries will be enriched here at St. Jude's as we move forward in faith. We pray to the Lord. For all the soldiers on active duty and the first responders, we pray to the Lord. For those who are being held hostage, we pray to the Lord. For our Lenten journey, may our hearts and minds be free from sin and open to the goodness of God. We pray to the Lord. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, we pray to the Lord. For world peace, we pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, We pray to the Lord. We remember Reverend Thomas W. Buckley, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living Lord, we pray to you with confidence as we unite our poor prayers to the prayers of St. Jude, St. Joseph, and especially with the perfect prayer of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and give you the praise and glory of his name, the good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Cardinal Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will place my spirit within you and make you walk according to my laws. And my judgments you shall keep and observe, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May your holy gifts, O Lord, we pray, give us life by making us new and by sanctifying us. Lead us to things eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't forget we will be having a special St. Patrick's Day celebration after the 1030 Mass. And it will be a potluck downstairs in the church hall. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Renew your people within and without, O Lord. And since it is your will that they be unhindered by bodily delights, Give them, we pray, perseverance in their spiritual intent. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.